it is time to bring in Jim Lynch with Cover Your Assets. Jim, of course, joins us on a weekly basis. Uh, he is, uh, well, I would say very well versed on the, uh, the topics uh, like uh, Wall Street, the economy. He's an independent voice on politics, uh, and uh, he's not so independent on sports. But he brings many years of experience to life and those subjects, ladies and gentlemen. And he shares that with us on a Tuesday morning. Good morning, Mr. Lynch Osage. <laughs> Is that Osage or Old Sage? Osage, can you see? <laughs> <laughs> good morning, everybody. Jill, Marshall, everybody out there, you good folks. It's a beautiful day. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, anyhow, uh, let's get right to us. And it's society. A society is us. Um, the Constitution says of and for the people. Of and for the people. That's what the Constitution were, the Constitution was written for us. And um, I use that as a segue to a, a study published in USA Today all over the last give it a week, it's been around for a while, uh, indicating, um, listing after studying uh, the various countries that uh, the list of countries starts with that are happiest, that are happiest now, not wealthiest, not... This is the whatever. UN Happiness Survey. Exactly. It's a happiness survey. <laughs> so wonderful of you to say it. Uh, it starts with uh, Finland which um, this country is deemed uh, an educational country, the best. Um, and then we've got Sweden, and we've got Norway, and on down the list. And we really don't run into um, some big industrialized com uh, countries like Germany until far down the list. Uh, most importantly, the list ris shows us United States of America at 19 uh, on a list that uh, was roughly 25. Um, now, the components are really very simple components. It's what does the government do for the uh, citizen, the average guy, uh, in terms of education, uh, health care, medical job training, um, good roads, uh, attempts to uh, take care of the environment. And what is so interesting is that this list is made up, the top list is made up of countries which are deemed socialist. They're socialist democratic countries, yes. They're, they're democ they, 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 they use capitalism with a healthy mixture of socialism, yes. There we go. There we go. So I offer that to people who want to be a bit intelligent, a bit thoughtful, uh, when they hear politicians refer to the idea that we don't want to be socialists. Well, I'm sorry, we've actually been living with the positives of socialism uh, since all of us were born. Uh, some of it was brought about by legislation that was created by the uh, Great Depression of the 30s. But your Social Security check that you get... Uh, it's called Social Security for a certain reason. <laughs> it's just, this is just the classic, uh, you know, just absolutely uh, lowest common denominator, dumbing down, chopping off everyone's ganglia, and um, not explaining what what the difference between uh, socialism, not explaining the definition that's being given. It's like, oh, capitalism is bad. Socialism is good. I'm not saying that Jim is doing it. I'm just saying that overall in the last 25 years, you know. But, but, but uh, Jim and Jill, here's the funny thing. Take capitalism and take communism. All right, take those, the two things. 
at their heart, if they could be implemented perfectly, I mean perfectly, they're each very, very good ways <coughs> governments should run. Now, of course, there's corruption in both. Uh, the corruption is worse in communism because if it's, if you're corrupt and and you're and 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 you're part of the government, if you challenge that corruption, you're dead. In America, if there's corruption in the government, you challenge it, uh, you're either hated by the other side, but you're not dead. But that's where socialism comes in, and socialism blends. It doesn't blend well at all with communism, but it does blend really well with capitalism. Uh, it really does. It's, and we have we have many instances of it here that people are just completely uh, not focused on. But I, I think if you want to uh, draw a line between, you know, here, here's a great word, democracy, uh, all you have to do is look at the Turkish, uh, the, the elections in Turkey, where, where <laughs> the wrong guy won. So, um, so... He, that person is not going to uh, that government is not going to change and um you know people take for granted that uh, that you have a vote and the uh, uh the the outcome of the vote is the outcome of the vote and uh in fact uh, there are many uh, uh places where it's not even though there's a vote i i believe that a few weeks ago they had a vote in north korea yeah, because I, I remember showing Marshall a picture of, of <clears throat> Kim Jong-un uh, casting his ballot. So, it's just, so, so I guess that's democratic, right? No. <laughs> well, I, no, I, I'm, I'm talking about... Marshall, obviously your brain is far more evolved in this. I'm just talking about definitions as they are currently being presented. That's all. Well, that is accurate, and that is... I hope doesn't become a problem uh, for people's uh, minds and and therefore some of their actions in that they must realize that as Marshall has said uh, you can blend uh, you can can blend capitalism with socialism very well if you understand what you're doing which is for the benefit of all peoples. And let me go through an overly simplistic example. If we don't take care of the multitudes of people who get up every day and go to a job at a corporation and do functions that produce revenues for those corporations, and subsequently make money because they get a salary, and they spend that money in the economy, thereby making the economy grow, creating more profit for the corporation, and enabling people who have those salaries to buy goods and to take care of themselves. If we go down the path of constantly giving monies to uh, the uh, moneyed classes, the 1%, let's leave it at that, and we deny, uh, as a result, adequate resources to our population, we will destroy what we have in terms of an economy, uh, in terms of a country. I don't think we want to do that. So I don't think we want to get into our head notions that uh, socialism is bad or, or, or corporations are bad. Oh, well, right now, yeah. the pendulum really favors people of money and corporation. We've got to bring that back more towards center. And in the process of bringing that more back to center, we've got to elevate those folks uh, who are beyond the curve in terms of uh, being able to take care of themselves 
based on the amount of money they receive. I, I've just that ca- means yeah. enough money, enough programs to help them maintain 100% health. And enough money or programs to help them and their children to be as well educated as possible. Enough opportunities for them to buy the goods that corporations offer. It's called balance, but it's called sanity, and it's called what is good for society. We cannot allow people to basically yell and scream words that are incorrect. Socialism is a word. It's not an action. It's something that is incorporated into a group of people for everybody's good. It doesn't punish the wealthy. As I've explained, the wealthy are benefited every time another human being is born, another person is healthier, another person goes to college and gets educated, another person steps up to the plate and says, okay, I want to do this job. Corporations benefit from that. The rich benefit from that. You so know, it's, it's, we it's, must, and if you're not understanding this, please go and find out about it, because it's key to the way our democracy has been working, not working perfectly, but working for hundreds of years. Um, we, now, know, Marshall has referenced several times communism in our conversations. Uh, communism comes about as a very radical approach to supposedly giving the masses of people good things. It's a ploy. It's a hoax. It's just like the oligarchs throughout the world. They use language and other things to manipulate people for their control. If you look at what happened to the Chinese when they went communist, in the 40s, it destroyed them for at least three decades. Thank God they've come back. Thank God for the world that they've come back. If you look at Russia, after the 1917 revolution, when uh, the monarchy was, was killed and the communists took over, countless hundreds of millions of citizens were murdered by the like of Stalin. They were... They were made prisoners, slaves. Russians were taken back 40, 50 years in terms of their uh, culture, their mindset, and so forth. But again, I reference the communist approach to tell you that any one approach in any government doesn't work because it separates. It separates people. It separates their energy, it separates their spirit and their pride. Do not allow these people running around, be they white supremacists, anti-Semites, anti-corporation, anti-anything. Do not allow them to get into your head. What's God gave us minds that are bigger than any of this. But if you're lazy, you don't use them, and you feel like being down on things because you're having a bad day, one, that's your problem, but two, get out of it. And when you find yourself going into negativity in your conversation, have a friend, call them, talk to them, tell them, get me out of this. Thing I'm going through because it's not positive. You want to be positive. You don't want to be negative. You don't want to listen to negativity all day long, which is why we've cautioned about too much of taking in all this stuff, particularly from one, two, five different things where you just make it a habit to absorb yourself in what uh, they're talking about. Uh, we are Democrats. We are free people. We have a constitution which is 
of and for the people. If you just take those words, of and for the people, but look at them carefully. The N word is people. That means all the people. That means all the people, whoever they are. As I've said on the show before, immigration is crit- has been key to our growth and our prosperity. George Bush Jr. has cited that, the great speech of Ronald Reagan, okay? Immigration is a blessing. It's a blessing. Why do you think so many illegals are hired in this country? We need them to do the country. As I said in the last show, uh, the Irish came, the Italians, the Germans, the Chinese, before they were ever citizens. They helped build this country. Let's not be suckers. The people who want to get into office and dominate us with their views and with their approaches. You know, I uh, I listened to you, and I uh, John Oliver had said something very funny about immigration, and that, uh, he says, you know, when you drive, if if you happen to drive by these big corporate farms, you don't see many white people that are looking for jobs who are. Uh, 18 to 35, working in those lettuce fields. <laughs> yeah, know, but, it's, 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 but also, it, what? I, I just, they, there was a, a, a thing with visas for people, uh, and, and DHS finally released a bunch more because there are jobs that people won't fill. End of story. But, uh, you know, but, but getting away from the immigration uh, tone for a second and going back to what you're talking about communism and and capitalism and socialism uh in 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 this country is that is that it's 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 very interesting to look the united states really can't be compared to many countries because it is so big and so diverse and i know we all get sick and tired of hearing that um, the Scandinavian countries, most of those countries in the top ten, are smaller than the United States. But if you think back, Jim, my dentist, former dentist, Don Martin, who's retired, I used to go golfing with him. And he said something to me when I first met him, which really hit home. is His father said to him when he was growing up as a kid, don't make fun of the rich son. One day <laughs> you want to be one of them. It used to be wealthy people, whether they got their wealth through trading liquor or whatever, but wealthy people used to <clears> give <throat> back. The Rockefellers, the Kent, all of them. Yeah, they had very shady backgrounds, how they got wealthy, but they used to give back all these uh, in Pennsylvania. The names that you hear, the Carnegie, uh, the, 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 the Astor, you, you, They all gave Frick. back. But now, nowadays, when somebody gets wealthy— there's only a core of about eight or nine or ten of them that give back. Everybody else keeps getting wealthier. And and the reason people hate corporations is a bizarre wrong reason. They hate corporations because of Wall Street and what happened with um, um, the people that just stole money knowing what they were doing was going to sooner or later collapse. It was so people, Like that's not still happening. Yeah, people hate hate Wall Street. And, and then... When you see a corporation president who doesn't give raises, doesn't want to raise rates to $15 an hour, and that person's making uh, $300 million a year, the few right. instances that, that does, it used to, and, and it, we can return that way, Jim. The, the pendulum has swung so far to the 1%. That 1%, if they gave back 15% of their wealth to people who needed it in this country— well, a perfect yeah, example, suck. I'm sorry, but a perfect example of someone who has a great deal of wealth and is very active philanthropically um, uh, is Michael Bloomberg. He's got 60, I just saw it, it's like $67 billion. Now, we could use one million of that for the radio station, and uh, you know, it wouldn't do anything to, you know, it wouldn't affect him, and yet it's, you know, he, he gives tons, there, there's, there's, there's not enough that give. The pendulum has not swung back, and and that's this is where, this is where. And correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm I was pretty good in American history. This is where capitalism was always blended with. Is that the wealthy gave back 
to the middle class and the lower class because the middle class and the lower class, you wanted to have work at the new jobs. So more businesses could be formed, more people could form wealth. But people have been excluded from that now. That's what's wrong in this country. Really, there is an exclusionary line where you can only go so far and the 1% is not going to give up any of it. That's the big difference, Jim, in this country, is that uh, it, it, you know, it, enough is never enough for, for, for probably 85% of the one percenters. Enough is never enough. Excellent example. The history of our country, uh, the Rockefellers, which made, the family made it in oil, continue to make it, uh, Rockefeller Center, all of the art museums, all of the charities they've given through. Fast forward, Bill Gates and his wife, Melissa, they'll be giving all their money away, but they're currently devoting the, not only their money, but their time to trying to solve problems throughout the world. Now, people would say, oh, why world? Why not just here? They're doing it here as well, but folks, we live in a global society. Uh, uh, just, diseases, viruses, they travel, airplanes, you know what I mean? Take, they make the rest of the world healthier. We become healthier. Yeah, yeah, look, look at, I'll just say, compare Warren Buffett, whether you like him or not, to Sheldon Adelson. Who gives, who gives back their money uh, to... Well, Buffett Gates, I mean, just... You know, you know, who gives back? I mean, there's a difference in what you can do with your wealth. And you know what? In this country, no one, you're not forced to do things, but it has swung so far to one side that the only way you can actually bring it about is is by instituting a little bit of socialism into this country uh, and 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 have the wealthy pitch in and and help everybody else because you know what you're right Jim if they pitch in and take 20 percent of their wealth right now and pitch in and give it to the middle and lower income guess what they're gonna make more money off that you're absolutely right it comes back in spades yeah, it's unbelievable the healthier people are the more productive they are, the more money they make, the more tax revenues we have to support the, the government, and the more monies that go into the coffers of corporations and or their stockholders. And the country wouldn't With, be This so has split. been a successful model yeah. since the Depression. Yeah. This has been a successful model. We have gotten away from our model, and we've allowed some very wealthy people, through lawyers and lobbyists, to get the politicians to go along with them in terms of the tax breaks and so forth. You know, there still is there still is an oil depletion allowance in this country. For God's sake, when they put it in, it was 3 to $10 a, a barrel. It's $60 now and has been there for years. Now, we only got we have got to adjust, and the only way we're going to adjust is by le- electing people who are forward-thinking, who have a little charity in their hearts and a lot of brain power and a lot of vitality to change this thing. This thing can be changed. We have a democracy. But don't let the politicians usurp our liberties by trying to change our laws. All right, we're out of time. our rights. We are out of time on our law and our rights. God bless us all. I hope we're not. I know. We're out of time on the air. Okay. All right. All right sure. Play Thank ball. Great. I love you guys. Thank Have you. a good time. All right. All right. See all right, you sure. later. Uh, Jim Lynch and Cover Your Assets uh, here on Robin Hood Radio. Uh, and, of course, if you missed any of it, RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Uh, Jim Lynch, Cover Your Assets.